Hey guys, welcome to YouTube's favorite underground climbing channel. Don't you just love it when you wake up early in the morning and you drive off to the cliff and then you set everything up just to realize that you forgot your memory card in your camera? <laughs> But don't worry about me, I still had a great day climbing and I realized I have some climbing mail to answer. So uh, what is the best material to use for a Prusik? Is it nylon, Dyneema, Aramid, what is it? Well, for you, no fuss guys, I got some stuff to do today. Uh, I'd say get yourself a hollow block sterling Aramid uh, rope, okay? Sewn loop, you won't regret it. Leave a like on your way out. For you guys with the coffee, uh, let's hang out. I'll put this on the table, we'll talk about it some more. So let's do that. Okay, we got three slings here and one of these three are not like the others. <laughs> well, let's start with Dyneema. Let's get that right out of the way first. Why don't we use Dyneema as Prusik, for Prusiks? Well, the thing is Dyneema, let's just talk about it a little bit. Super lightweight and super strong. This is as strong as steel, maybe even stronger than steel for the amount that it is. Okay, so we use this for anchors a lot because it's super light, super strong, uh, strong stuff. However, the melting point of one of these is around like 200 degrees or something, which is definitely obtainable. We're talking about repelling with, with this material down, the, down a line or something. Um, I mean, you could probably get that going up a line if you're, if you're climbing really fast. So we really tend not to use that. Besides that, it's, it's pretty slippery. People say it's a pretty slippery material. If you wanted to haul one of your friends up and this potentially slips, you're gonna end up hurting that person and it's not very fun. So we don't use Dyneema at all for Prusix. We try not to anyway. Um, that leaves us with two materials. So we have Aramid and we have the, this nylon. Now this is actually a special one because this is called a jammy. And this is a not, it's a corn mantle rope. So it's got a core, it's got a mantle, it's a German thing. <laughs> the mantle, the sheath is nylon, the core is actually aramid. Now, there are guys that'll climb with just a nylon accessory cord, no core at all. And the way you could tell that is if you grab a loop and you gave it a pinch like this, it would lay flat. See how that's kind of looped? But this doesn't have a core. This is just a sheath. This lays completely flat. If you damage your rope and it lays, lays completely flat like that, it's called getting a dead spot and you know the core is messed up in your rope. This one still has a core, so it's making a loop. Okay, so uh, why'd they do that? Well, the thing is with nylon, it's really good for taking impacts, for, for stretching. It stretches. Nylon's really stretchy. Aramid's not. If you fall on, if you shock load one of these things, it might not even look damaged, but it will be definitely compromised and you won't be able to use it. So what they figured is they joined the both together. Now, why Aramid at all? Well, Aramid doesn't even have a melting point. They say it decomposes at 2000, maybe close to 3000 degrees. Firefighters use Aramid as like uh, tag lines to pull the firemen out or like let the firemen know its way out of a out of a burning building. Super expensive ropes, probably like thousand dollar ropes. So Aramid is a great material for that. For I think, uh, I don't want to say it's super UV protective, but definitely heat resistant. I, I don't know why, but I think boats, uh, like big ships, they use Aramid lines. I think it's just light and I'd actually do some more research and to figure that out. but. That's why we use Aramid. So the reason this whole question came up is because one of you guys was climbing with a climbing guide and you were gonna put maybe some nylon accessory cord on the rope and he slapped that out of your hand and said, hey, use this, this Aramid Sterling thing. Well, the reason why is because we, it's the melting points. There's a lot of friction when you're, when you're repelling. So he probably wants you to use one of these because he thinks you're gonna melt through the nylon. If you had a jammy, you have a little bit more resistance, but nylon melts at around like 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a bit of a higher melting point. You could probably get to, I would love to, I would love to run some rope through something really fast and see what temperature I get to. Probably, you probably have to really repel super duper, like, what's the word? <laughs>
irresponsibly fast. You have to be repelling irresponsibly fast to like really do some damage. You probably should repel pretty slow, but uh, that's why. So nylon's still good. The reason they had they mix these two up is because we get the best of both worlds. We get the stretchiness. Uh, if we need, if we get into some kind of shock scenario, and we also get the heat resistance in case we melt through something. So. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the uh, diameter of these things. So the diameter of this is around 5.5 and that's as low as I'd go. Another thing that's nice about nylon is it's very supple. So it's a little bit easier to work with. This is around 6.8 millimeters and you don't want a Prusik that's like maybe anything over seven. So if it's too big, it'll slip if it's too small it'll be harder to work with so that's uh i think that's all the information i have on everything i mean it's like kind of like getting information out of a fire hose but uh, i hope you enjoyed that <laughs> let's get out to the outro i think that's everything i have to say about that stuff if you have any questions definitely leave them down in the comments um do you work with this one i feel if i was a tree guy if i had to work with prusiks all day long i think i'd get this I think this works the best. We're talking price wise. I'll put this in my Amazon store so you can see the current prices right now, but I'd say this is about like 17 bucks. This is about 10. So this is also cheaper, less aramid, lighter, smaller, a little too long. I think this one's a little too long, but yeah, that's about it. Well, I think that about sums up. If you have anything to add, leave it down below in the description. Let me know if you guys work with this or what do you think? What do you use? Uh, you can get different results with different types of things. You use a Klemheis knot or a regular Prusik. Um, that's all on a different episode. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, comment, like, subscribe, make a video every single week. And I'll see you guys next week. Josh Perry, climbing out of here.